It's Friday, my dudes, and you know what that means? What? It's not Friday? <laughs> Welcome to NXT Talk. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about only the stuff I care about NXT because, to be fair with you, I'm saying it at the beginning. For me, it was a very mid show, a show that nothing really happened. So, let's just talk about it. First thing I want to talk about is the Heritage Cup shit that is going on. The Noam Dar is having a cup, Nathan Fraser is having a legit cup, and they just had a match for the Heritage Cup with Tyler Bate, I mean Noam Dar and Tyler Bate, and Tyler Bate won the fake cup. And after that, in the backstage, Tyler Bate gave back the cup to Noam Dar. If Noam Dar admits that Nathan Fraser is the real champ, so Noam Dar is gonna have a match versus Nathan Fraser at Heatwave or next week? What is Heatwave even? I really like the concept of the Heritage Cup because, yeah, it's a cup, it's not a traditional championship belt, and also it has a special rules that is defended on, and I really like the uniqueness of all of this stuff. Didn't like the fact that there are two cups, and I didn't like the fact that the fake cup is the personality of Noam Dar, really. Without the cup, he's depressed. Or... I think it's a kind of a lame storyline. I hope they end it soon with that match between Noam Dar and Nathan Fraser. And I'm really excited for the future. The next thing I want to talk is the NXT Championship and who is the next contender because no one really talks about it. Melo does not target anyone. Melo is really concerned with what is happening with Trick at the moment and he doesn't really look forward to defend his championship which I guess besties and you're looking for your bestie and all of that stuff but Wesley is interested in the title, Dijak is interested in the title and next week they have a match to determine who is gonna be the number one contender. I would be excited to see both matches or maybe even a triple threat match, I don't know, but I'm sure that Melo is gonna hold that title for a long time. I thought that he's gonna drop the title at the Great American Bash to join Bobby and the Street Profits, but uh, my prediction was completely false, so I'm excited to see the future, as I said. Another match that was interesting, I don't know if I'm interested in a long-term feud, but that match was really interesting and I feel like we should not stop there yet. Von Wagner versus Braun Breaker. For the first time since he came in NXT, I'm actually excited for a feud of Braun Breaker. It's really weird because main roster superstars came to face Braun Breaker and all of that stuff, but I was never that excited than with Von Wagner because Von Wagner is a big guy and Braun Breaker is a big guy and I'm not expecting a match of the caliber of Ricochet and Logan Paul from them but I'm really excited to see what they will break because it's, it's, it's Braun Breaker, right? Another feud that is really interesting for me is Trick Williams versus Ilya Dragunov I feel like we're going in the right direction with Trick Williams not wanting to be a sidekick and all of that stuff. I'm looking forward for it. It's all I'm gonna say. It's gonna be a banger of a match between Trick and Ilya and I feel like we're finally gonna see the full potential of Trick because he's really good at the mic and I feel like he's good in the ring but he was not able to showcase it while he was under Mellow and now they're gonna give him the platform to showcase it. I really don't understand what is happening with the Schism, Creed Brothers and why the Angelo family is joining all of that crap and is the Creed Brothers there still and I don't know I guess the full thing is gonna be like the Angelo family is gonna have a match with uh, the Dyad and Creed Brothers are gonna show up from somewhere to help and uh, that's how we're gonna understand that they're still there. Why did we do this? Why don't, didn't we kick the Creed Brothers out of NXT? As I said in the previous episode, every time we had a quitter quit match, whatever, the loser quits, like, 
for example. We didn't even have a loser match kind of situation in SummerSlam and Ronda Rousey is leaving. Because, yeah, because Shayna Baszler kicked her out of WWE and all of that stuff. But for some reason, Creed Brothers are still there. I don't get it. Move on, please. And finally, the main event. Dominic Mysterio versus Dragon Lee with uh, Rey Mysterio in his corner. Guys, I'm gonna admit something. It's very dirty, like the Dirty Dom, but I kinda like the fact that Dirty Dom cannot win a match by himself. I kinda like that. I kinda like that every time that Dom wins is because of Rhea's help, of the Judgment Day's help, of someone else's help. I like that. Because you know every time that Dom is with Rhea or with someone, he'll win. You know that. And the moment he'll have a match with Rhea, not next to him or Judgment Day not next to him, the stakes will be really high and you will really look forward for Dom losing that title but I guarantee you until that moment comes he's gonna be good enough and he's gonna retain the title because everyone will expect him to lose it. I, I'm, a, I'm really excited to see how that whole concept is working out. The thing that I didn't like is that we wasted Dragon Lee plus Rey Mysterio that early when they clearly going in the concept of Dominic Mysterio is always gonna win because of someone else's help I think that we at least could have used that feud later on like for example after a few months when he's a champion for as I said a couple of months and we kind of want to put that championship seriously on the line and we put high stakes in Dragon Lee because Rey Mysterio is there. It's not really a bad call, it's not really bad decision or anything, I'm just expressing my point of view. I really enjoy to see that concept of a championship, of a champion. That is NXT for me guys. As I said at the beginning, unfortunately last night's NXT was a little bit of a mid for me and I was really struggling even to find the best moment. The best moment for me was when the schism was searching for the Creed brothers and they asked the D'Angelo family, family and Tony D'Angelo and Stax just pulled out crowbars from their asses. That was amazing, but why do, do they have crowbars in their asses? What are you guys doing with those crowbars? <laughs> Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next episode for SmackDown and I love you and have a lovely week and I sometimes I'm sitting right here and I don't know what to say. But every time I manage to say something. And the thing that bothers me the most is